Even Arabs get treated better than you, even post 911, because they got countries that will speak up. But when Trayvon was shot down, what African country called the State Department to inquire about why our African brothers being shot like that? When Eric Garner was murdered, did anybody get a phone call from Nigeria or Ghana? When Freddie Gray was murdered, did Jamaica or Brazil or Bermuda call Obama and say, what is going on? You got to understand something, y'all. We need international allies. Every country has international allies. Every nation, you a nation within a nation, where's your allies? Do you realize we should be able to get on the phone and call the president of Ghana and say, listen, cops over here killing black folk. And L.A. like is crazy. We need you to call Obama, tell him we need to chill the hell out or you're going to cut off that supply of gold. South Africa, black men going to jail like it's crazy. Let Obama know if this don't stop, you can forget about them diamonds. Malawi, let him know if it don't stop, Lipton ain't getting no more tea. <laughs> I'm serious. Ethiopia, tell him. Next time a black man is murdered unjustifiably, that Ethiopian cotton, polo ain't getting no more of that. <laughs> That's how you work it. But because you hate Africa, you don't see the whole chessboard. You plan with one rook and you fail to see the whole table. The white man does everything in collaboration with other white men. The Asian does everything in collaboration with other Asians. Listen, the Afghani think he better than the Kuwaiti. Kuwaiti think he better than the Iranian. Iranian think he better than the Pakistani. But when it's time for the Arab League to meet about Arab people, all oh, that's put to the side. We got race business to deal with. Chinese think they better than Japanese. Japanese think they better than Vietnamese. Vietnamese think they better than Cambodians. But when it's time to talk about progress for Asians, Italians think they better than Jews. Jews think they better than Anglo-Saxons. Anglo-Saxons think they better than everybody. <laughs> but when it comes time to talk about the mutual progress of white supremacy, Put that shit to the side. We got business. Before we can afford to fight with each other, we got to make sure the white man stay in charge. And then it's you. <laughs> the whole teppers. <laughs> we can't unify. You know why? Because you hate each other more than you hate white supremacy. That's why. Dr. Umar, why can't we come together? Black men in jail, black women getting full, poor health care, black women got the highest infant mortality rate in the world, in the most technologically advanced country. How does that happen? AIDS, Ebola, black women, number one victim of AIDS in the world, 38 to 58 is the number one killer globally. Black men can't find a job. How is it we can't come together and fight these things, Dr. Johnson. Because we love white folks more than we love ourselves. A black man would rather fight another black man and fight the enemy. Some people say we need to get rid of religion to solve our problem. I'm not going to disagree with you, but I'm going to add something to you that's going to bust your bubble, whole teppers. <laughs> if you believe we need to get rid of religion in order for us to come together, you're going to have to get rid of these ideologies along with it. Are y'all following me? Don't tell me we got to get rid of Islam and Christianity because you fighting just as much over everything else. 
You're fighting over your Hebrewism, your Moorishism, your nation of Islamism, your Nawapianism, your God and Earthism, your socialism, your Pan-Africanism, your alienism. Some of y'all Negroes hate being black so much, you don't even come from us. You come from another galaxy. I had a Negro stop me the other day, brother, I'm not African or nothing, I'm from another planet. You see how racist white folk is. First they said the Egyptians was black. Excuse me, the Egyptians was white. We proved the Egyptians wasn't white. They said, well, maybe they Arab. We proved the Egyptians wasn't Arab. Maybe they was East Indian. We proved the Egyptians wasn't East Indian. Maybe they were Native American. We proved they wasn't that. They said, shit. I know, they was aliens. They came. They said, you can't tell, look at the heads. <laughs> Damn, that's some racism. Yeah. I don't want to give you the credit so much yeah. that I'm going to say they came from another planet. And some of y'all believe that shit. Y'all reading them books, Jordan Maxwell and all that shit. The Egyptians, the original Egyptians came from the planet Plu and Mu and Fu. Brothers and sisters, we got to come together if we serious. Yeah. I'm a Pan-Africanist, but I'm not no Pan-African. What's the word I'm looking for? Chauvinist. I work with anybody. You a Hebrew, you serious? Let's work. Now, I'm not going to put on the wristbands or nothing, but we can work. <laughs> Hotep, brother. I can't. I'm going to keep my dash here. I can't do that. My Moorish brothers, you want to get some work done? I'm going to work. I'm not going to wear the fez, though. But I'm going to work. Nawapian brothers, let's work. See, the reason why we fight so much is because we don't want to work, so we keep conflict going, so we never get around to assignments. We're going to have to get to a point in the unapologetically African movement that everything we buy is bought or made by a black person. Yes. I read about one of the revolutions. I forget which revolution it was. They only wore the clothes they made. When you serious, that's where you go. That's our... Until we're willing to say we're going to walk out here and we don't give another penny to a European, yeah. we're going to wear our own clothes, make our own food, that's when we know we're serious. But some of y'all going to walk out here tonight and go to Ching Chow Wow's restaurant. <laughs> Three wing, what would you like on it? Hot sauce. Hot tea, sugar with you tea. Orange juice, no, no. Lucy's 35 cents. No potato chips, 35 cents. I'm sure the nickel though. No, we sorry. We will hold till you come back. You've been shopping at that Chinese store for 50 years and you short one penny and they will not give you the food. And I don't know why y'all eating them damn chicken wings anyway because it's not even chicken. And you're trying to convince yourself this is chicken. You pour the chicken out the shit look like this. That's a hand. That's a finger. Talk about maybe that's the way the chicken was lying when they cut it. Damn beef and broccoli. Ain't no beef look like that. Beef look like Twizzler. Feel like Twizzler. cooking cats and dogs and everything, and you out there. When you ever see the Chinese store change the grease they cook with? Talking about that's what gives the food its flavor. That dirty grease. And you love it. 
rice and gravy. And you know where that comes from, right? The rise of the fast food, the disintegration of the black family. When do we get fast food? The 80s. Why do we get fast food? Because the breakdown of the black family due to mass incarceration of crack cocaine. McDonald's. Study McDonald's. Study Burger King. Study Kentucky Fried Chicken. Look when they got their boom. And look where most of them are located at. Yeah, white folks eat the fast food, but they not concentrated like they concentrated in your neighborhood. When the last time you see license and inspection go and inspect a Chinese restaurant? Have you ever seen the city inspect a Chinese restaurant? But let you go open up a black restaurant. They sending you all kind of sight. You ain't got enough fire alarms. You ain't got no exit emergency door. Your stove too small. You ain't got enough lights. Look at the Chinese people. You know what I think is going on? I think the Chinese folks is working with the government to give black folk all kind of diseases through that trifling ass food. It's a deal going on. That's right. That's right. Put this in the oil. That's right. Put this in the chicken grease. Carcinogens, known cancer causes. And that's why y'all better stay away from the immunizations. My elders, cut that, cut that out. I went to Africa, I said I ain't taking no more shots, I'm done with the shots, that's over with. The older we get, the less shots we need, you don't need none of that stuff. Just eat right, take the right stuff. My vegetarians, I love y'all for keeping us, you know, on, on the path. Some of y'all a little crazy though. <laughs> Damn. One time I was in a restaurant eating, a sister came over there, ain't you Dr. Umar? How you gonna be leading the people eating this? Oh, tap, sister? <laughs> Damn. All the white people stop this shit? Like, yo, is she going to shoot him? <laughs> I'm working on it. I just got a reading when I was in Columbia, South Carolina. The elder was like, and I'm going to share this with you. I don't mind. He said, okay, your next level for you is discipline. And he said, it starts with your diet. He said, you, for the role that you have to play for our people, you're going to have to give up meat. Chicken <laughs> but he was right though. I'm gonna get that. But see, some of y'all vegetarians are too extreme. That vegan thing is crazy. I can understand the vegetarian part, but y'all take it to the no animal product. Y'all be at the restaurant harassing the cook. I don't know if it's any egg juice in it. I don't know. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey Academy, if you haven't donated, make sure you do. GoFundMe.com forward slash Dr. Umar. We got a half million dollars. I want to thank y'all for helping me raise that money. <laughs> <laughs>